Everybody pop on in. What's going on with you, family? Everybody good? Tap it in with the fam bam, seeing what's up with y'all. What's up, Nikki? Nikki the God, I see you, beloved. What's up, Sir Major? I see y'all in here. Happy Memorial Day to everybody. It's Memorial Day. Shout out to all the FBA family. Shout out to all the non-FBA family. As we know, Memorial Day was a day created by Foundation of Black Americans, if you did not know that. Memorial Day is a day that was created by foundational Black Americans. How many of y'all knew that? Raise your hand if you knew that. Memorial Day was created after the Civil War. The country was torn up. The white supremacists were disillusioned, and it was Black people who decided to pay homage to the soldiers. Black people got it together and said, hey, let's let's honor these guys who fought and um, let's, let's give them a shout out. So Memorial Day was created by the FBA family. You understand? And you know, we have created a lot of things within the culture. What's up, Mr. Dr. Davinsky? Let's get you in here real quick, see what you got to say. Dr. Davinsky, hop on, sir. Got a lot of folks in here right now. What's up, Dr. Davinsky? Hello, Tariq. Uh, I just wanted to comment on your D Dinesh post. Yes. Um, what he said was kind of ironic because he belongs to the South Asian race or ethnic group, and they actually have the lowest uh, IQ in the world. So recent studies by Richard Lin have found that Nepal has an IQ of 42. So people like this, they don't understand the selection bias when you take, so Nigerian Americans, for instance, are among the most educated, wealthiest ethnic groups in America. Mm -hmm. And that's because when you take the smartest of any population, which usually are like from India or Nigeria, you get a, you know, because there's a big correlation between wealth and intelligence right. and overall metrics. So Dinesh is just coping. Um, but you should stop with your anti-white stuff. That's what I'd say also, because the divide isn't good. No, anti-white like what? What have I ever said that was anti-white? Anything. Well, you talk about white supremacy a lot, and uh, that's a myth. Well, that was a myth created by your community. If it's a myth, then, right? Well, yes, I agree. But my community, uh, as in, like, the Jews, uh, I'd say that that would be a more accurate statement. Just think about it like this. If there really is a global white supremacy, um, like a shadowy room of like white people like trying to hold down minorities, why did the majority of white nations fight against the Nazis? This was the one chance we had at global white supremacy if it does exist. Yet 80 million people died fighting against this concept. Well, right. the thing is, many of those nations absorbed some of the Nazis, even the United States. A lot of the Nazis came here and became scientists and doctors. A lot of them went down into South America, um, Argentina, Brazil. A lot of them were absorbed into many European nations. They just didn't want um, Germany being the dominant country in the world. Sometimes you'll have two white supremacist powers fighting each other, but the name of the game and the prize is to ultimately dominate all of the non-white people, sir. So yes, white supremacists fight each other all the time. But no, I mean, they would have tied flags, right? And the Nazis in themselves weren't really white supremacists. Um, I mean, there, were elite, there was allegiances with the Arabs, with the East Africans, um, the, the Nazis wait, wait, let's were... slow down. Wait, slow down. Let's slow down. Slow down. Because their you words know, were their words. You were know, white anthropologists used to consider Sir. East Africans to be Caucasoid, yeah. But the thing is, they slaughtered the Germans. Slaughtered several Africans. The Namibians, sir. There was a genocide in Namibia before there was a genocide in in, in Nazi Germany, sir. They slaughtered Africans over there. In which year was this? This was the Second Reich, not the Third Reich. This was the the. So was Hitler involved in this? Oh, the Germans and Hitler was German, and that was a part. Yeah, of but we're the talking practice. about the Germans and Nazi Germany. Well, we're moving the goalposts, sir. You're moving the goalposts. No, no, no. I mentioned the Second. World War. I'm saying if so, let's just take the narrative, the Jewish narrative, that the Germans wanted to create this master race of people, Europeans being the white master race and Japanese being the East Asian master race. Let's slow down, and, slow down, let's slow down, let's slow down, to... let's slow down, let's slow down, because that's what Hitler said. It wasn't the Jews said that Hitler said that. 
Hitler talked about the master race and how the white Aryans were the master race and the dominant And race. if this is true, why didn't the Americans, why didn't the majority of European nations, why didn't Australia join with Hitler? Sir, if, if global I'm, white I'm, supremacy sir. is a thing, why wouldn't they tie flags and fight for a common cause? Sir, I'm telling you, they had a camaraderie with a lot of the Nazis. There was a Nazi um, community here in Los Angeles during World War II. Up in the mountains, they had a Nazi community here. There were Nazi enclaves and there were Nazi pockets all over the place. And they still have a camaraderie. With yeah, OK, right? I, I sure. understand that. But there was also a lot of scientists, a lot of a lot of um, technology, technological advancements. And there was a lot of great minds in Germany. Right. So even if they had evil uh, ideologies, they still had some utility to these nations that they emigrated from. So sir, yeah, there were, not, sir, there were Nazi sir, scientists sir. that worked on the space program and nuclear oh, weapons. Slow down, sir, now you're, you're Mayo babbling, sir, because we're going to speak, speak truth to power. You're not going to rewrite history. You had people like Henry Ford who was clicked in with them. He was a camaraderie with the Nazis. You had a lot of prominent white supremacist Americans who were clicked in with the Nazis. Sir, is this true or false? We don't want to. We want to talk about some of these American corporations yes, that, that were clicked that in with the true, Nazis. But okay, the there we go. Establishment was not. The establishment was clearly against the Nazis. When you know, no, after the Second World no, War, no, 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 sir, no, 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 no. They weren't. It was. They just didn't want Germany to become too powerful. Just like with Russia, you don't want Russia to become too powerful. You clicked in with them, but sometimes the white supremacists will fight each other over who gets the knife over. Let's be clear. Let's not act like they were mortal enemies, just like the Civil War, sir. The North and the South, they fought each other all over who's going to dominate us. We didn't really get any, we didn't get any love from the Union after the war. When the war was over, they went right back to Let me ask you a question, Tariq. Do you believe in global white supremacy? Do you think there's a cabal of white people controlling the world trying to hold the black man down? Is it true or not true? Because yes, based on circumstances, yes, it's true. Because they said it's true and they implement it militarily. So is that true or not true? Are they militarily subjugating black people and non-white people globally? So the division in this world. Sir, and, uh... wait, no, 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 no. Because I asked you a question, sir. Supremacy means one thing. My group can kill your group with impunity. Can black people kill any white people with impunity? They do in South Africa every day. If you don't stop, is, is, if you don't stop telling that lie, sir, you're not going to sit here and lie. No black people are in South Africa killing white people with impunity. That is a lie. I've been to South Africa. The black people there are completely subjugated. The black people are living in shanty towns in little raggedy townships and the white people are living high off the hog. I have a video of me walking all around South Africa proving this. You're not going to sit here and lie, sir. Now we're not going to do bad faith arguments. Black people are not, are not, are not killing white people with impunity in South Africa. Now, sir. So you, being a farmer, a white farmer in South Africa is one of the most dangerous professions. That's a there damn is. lie. That it's is not, a lie. That is a lie. It is not dangerous. Nobody's harming the white people in South Africa. The white people in South Africa are well protected. There's videos of them smacking the black people around over there. The black people over there ain't turning up enough, as far as I'm concerned. They ain't turning up enough over there. So you would they advocate for more killings of white people in I, South Africa? I would advocate justice. <laughs> See, this is why I say it's an anti-white to me. That's not anti-white. That's anti-white supremacy. You should not be in a position where you subjugate and dominate and mistreat the people based on race. If they're in a position to counter that and produce justice, they should produce justice, just like they did in um, Zimbabwe. And Zimbabwe is still dominated by white supremacy because the Western powers have economic sanctions on them, sir. Zimbabwe so literally fell it. because they deported the white people from the farming industry the, out of the country. And then okay. the blacks didn't know how to farm. Leading If you don't stop telling that lie. Now, these are white supremacist lies. Sir, I have been 
to Zimbabwe. There are plenty of black farmers out there. What do you mean they didn't know how to farm? They've been out there because the white people of... had the industry, they had the tractors, they had the knowledge, right? I'm not saying stop, black sir, people aren't sir, capable of sir, learning these sir, things. Sir, stop. You're trying to say that these people in Zimbabwe, been there for hundreds of thousands of years, didn't know how to put seeds and water into the ground because that's all farming is, sir. Is that what you're trying to say? A lot of civilizations say? never had like farming on any industrial it, level. So like, have- like Europe. You mean like Europe? Europe was not an agrarian society. It was not an agrarian culture. You guys were starving in Europe, sir. That's where the people Europeans, who didn't know how to Europeans, the farm British were. invented the second industrial revolution. We, no, we sir, you did mass you're, farming, you're, mass production. No, you, you, sir, you me. didn't, sir. Um, you got other people to do it, which were black people. When y'all came over let here, me, to the let States, me just tell- when you came over here to the states, or well, to what would become the United States, by yourselves, you damn near starved to death, sir. You came over here and starved to death in the early colonies. That you tried to form here, sir. We're not going to rewrite history. Uh, to Is that true can you let me finish a sentence before you cut me but, off? Because you're not going to lie. Today. Okay, okay. I'm not going to. You're not going to lie. I'm not going to let you lie, sir. Now, did you guys come over here and starve without black people helping you or not? Well, Name if a you let me actually land a point without muting me. Okay, I'm going to. You answer my question. Name a prosperous white European colony that was over here in North America before black people got involved. Name it. I agree. Foundational black Americans have a claim to America and they Then thank you. Then. Thank you. Well, don't don't use statement. don't use bad faith arguments, sir. Okay. But let's go back faith. to Zimbabwe. You don't even- let's go back to Zimbabwe with this whole thing where they didn't know how to farm. That's horse crap. They These didn't know how to farm on an industrial level yes, and that was proven Stop by it, the sir. deportation of whites and the subsequent... Thousands. Okay, so why do they have the economic sanctions on Zimbabwe? They have harsh economic sanctions on Zimbabwe, sir. Do you know if about they're the history so... of Botswana? Botswana is probably the most successful sub-Saharan um, African country. I'm, I'm and... talking about Zimbabwe. You're talking about something else. I, every time I bring up a point, you change the subject on some whataboutisms. Let's stick to Zimbabwe. All right? Let's not dance and dribble and mayo babble. Why do they have economic sanctions on Zimbabwe? Zimbabwe is a failed them? state. They fucking press it's it's failed because people. the West powers. It's because of the white supremacists. They put economic sanctions on Zimbabwe. That's what the problem is. Yeah, they put because they genocided sanctions. the white people. Why wouldn't we put oh, sanctions well, on Stop them? it. The white people were genociding them in Rhodesia. What, were they supposed to just sit back and let the white supremacists subjugate them indefinitely? No. But you know, All right, you, then. You've got no <laughs> argument. So they, they had farming on a subsistence level, but not industrial. Right, they didn't know how to use the tractors. Well, they no, they had trade. The no, 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 stop. No, 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 no. They had open trade markets when the white supremacists were over there dominating everything. It wasn't that they didn't know how to industrialize the farming. The trade lines were open, and when the white supremacists were put out, they closed the trade lines. That's what it was. It wasn't with, because they were so inept. I've been all over Zimbabwe. I've funded some of the farmers over there. Sir, you're talking to somebody who's been there. So that bullshit you saying, that's not going to work here. I've been there. I've been all over Zimbabwe. They have plenty of farmers. They know how to grow food. They know how to develop all of this stuff. The sanctions from the white supremacist powers, these are the things that's harming them, sir. Um, sure. Like sanctions do harm, but they're also a... A good way. So, do you agree with the sanctions on Russia? Do you think that a country should be disciplined for doing bad actions on the international stage? Uh huh. Uh huh. Do you agree with that? So, we both agree. But, with Zimbabwe, but I, I disagree with sanctions. The genocide in the white I, disag- I disagree with sanctions being put on countries based on race, and you're going to punish people for not wanting to be subjugated. And the people, Ian Smith, who was over there running Rhodesia, he was the one talking about he wants to maintain white supremacy for the next thousand years. So do you think that's a just society, sir? Uh, I don't think that's just, but I'm pretty sure the deportations and seizure of white farmland was far after the collapse of Rhodesia. 
But I do want to move on to an, I do want to move on to Botswana uh-huh. because Botswana so, so you're agreeing you should be looking up to in the African subcontinent. Botswana is the most successful nation in Africa, I would say, in terms of Global Peace Index, GNI per capita, Human Development Index. It's even more advanced than most of these North African countries. And the reason for this is after the British basically left uh, Botswana, after they gained independence, the Botswanan president at the time had the second poorest country in the entire world. They were like, most of the population, like 80% were illiterate. There was mass starvation, famines. It was in an awful state. So what he did is he's like, okay, we don't have an educated populace to run this. What we're going to do is we're going to actually contract the British to help us run the country for a decade, write our constitution, implement the legal systems and societal kind of structures, and look at what the achievement was. Whites aren't trying to hold down Africa. Africa. China's robbing you now. Why it's actually built infrastructure and um, you know trade routes and everything in Africa? Okay, while they drain the resources, they're not okay. Let's okay. Let me mute you. They're not doing Botswana a favor. It's dominated by European powers. They come in and acting. They act like they're doing you a favor. Hey, look at us. We're going to come in and we're going to build this infrastructure as we get all of the diamonds, the gold, the cobalt, all of the precious minerals and resources and we're going to drop a couple of grains of rice to you so they're just dominated by western powers that's another trick of white supremacy also botswana is a pedophile paradise that's where all the white supremacists go over there and get with them underage kids out there and do everything under the child of god to these kids so that's not a good deal look up botswana and pedophile it's major over there that's a playground for white supremacist pedophiles so don't use botswana Botswana as a damn example, sir. That's another sanction and um, section of white supremacy. You keep proving Speaking that we're under the global dominance of Tariq. white supremacy. Speaking of pedophiles, your name is Tariq Nasheed. Are you a Muslim? Okay, sir. Muhammad was a Muslim, just... and he's your prophet, right? He married a six-year-old child and raw-dogged Asia when she was nine. Okay, so you should not talk about pedophiles in this context, my man. Okay. Sir, he also you, owned slaves and he called black people raisin heads. Now, what Sue, sir, sir, you are from a European Christian nation. Um, the Christian churches today have um, priests that rape boys wholesale all over the place. The Vatican and these people look the other way. This is what about yeah. is them, okay? Oh, yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're going to talk about them, we're going to talk about you. You, you. you don't want to talk about No, no, pedophiles. are you a Muslim? Can you answer You don't want to talk about no pedophiles, sir. Y'all churches, these are Christian you churches, Islamic yeah, sir, 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 your Catholic churches stay up in boy bussy every damn day. Y'all rape and, and molest kids like it's nothing. Y'all went over to Africa raping and molesting kids. Y'all enslave people. You guys sanctioned the modern slave trade. You want to talk about Muslims and slavery? The Vatican was the one who sanctioned slavery, and the Christian church was the one who codified it. You go into these African nations and these black nations and these indigenous nations First with your damn Bible, then with the slave chains. And then you have the nerve to sit up here talking about a Muslim enslaved somebody a thousand years ago. Man, you got a nerve on you, don't you? So, no, the Muslim slave trade, the Arab Islamic slave trade, was a thousand years before the transatlantic. They also enslaved 10 million white people. Oh, probably and they that. started it. And they Saudi started Arabia, it, the most- they started it and you mastered it. They gave you the alley oop and you dunked the ball, sir. So you are not at liberty to point the finger and reprimand any other religion when you've mastered the game of slavery and subjugation, sir. Europeans were the ones who outlawed slavery worldwide. Stop it. Years. Stop no, it. Stop are. it. You don't. No, no, no. A rapist don't get credit for pulling his dick out. OK. Just because you pull your dick out during the rape, you don't get no credit. You guys codified and industrialized modern slavery. And after you stopped doing formal slavery, you had other forms of slavery, which is now the prison system. Now you've industrialized the slave system. So you don't get no credit for the antebellum slave system that was really stopped 
by foundational black Americans. Y'all got tired of them ass whoopings that we kept giving. We were the ones who said enough is enough. It was us living in those swamps, coming out of those swamps, whooping ass and stopping the slave trade too. It was black people, foundational black Americans, who were the ones fighting in the Civil War because the North was losing to the South. Abraham Lincoln thanked the black people, the freedmen, and the other black Maroons who fought in the Civil War because he said if it weren't for them, they would not have won the Civil War. So we're going to tell all the truth of history, sir. We're not going to do the white supremacy cherry picking. Tariq, the British uh-huh. Empire ruled about 80% of the population, of the global population. They were the ones who had the most influence in, in the world economy, the world system, and they outlawed slavery, right? But more. Sir, t- the British, all they did was stop the importation of black people all over the globe because they turned Africa itself into a giant plantation. They said, we no longer have to bring people from Africa and other places to the Americas and to the Caribbean. We can just put a economic fence around the whole continent and we dominate it right there. We'll dominate the people right where they are. That's why many of those names over there in Africa were named by the white supremacists in Britain. Nigeria was named by a white British woman. They codified and then they colonized the whole continent of Africa. They sat up here and went to the Berlin Conference and carved up Africa and start divvying out parts of Africa to different parts of Europe, sir. So we're not going to give them credit for stopping anything. All they did was expand slavery under another name, which was colonization, sir. Terry, could I just make my point on slavery? It'll take one and, minute. And, and white people, uh, yeah, white, I, my name is Tariq. White people, y'all kill me. Tariq. Tariq. Listen, Tariq. Y'all kill me with that. That's so condescending. It's Tariq. But go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry I mispronounced your Arab master's name. So when it comes to slavery, there's more slaves alive today than at any point in human history. Right now in countries like Mauritania, Chad, Niger, there's a chattel-based, meaning you were born into it, a chattel-based, race-based slavery system where the Arab Berbers are enslaving millions of black Africans called the Eichelin. You can look this up. I made a video about it. I can send you peer-reviewed articles Mm -hmm. on it. No one talks about this. Millions of black people are enslaved by Arab Berbers across Africa today, right? But you want to concentrate Mm -hmm. on white people 200 years ago? Come on, dude. Uh, I'm concentrating on you now. And Muhammad, Muhammad. Dude. We ain't talking about Muhammad. No, 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 no. If they want to take care of that, they need to go ahead and handle that because I'm talking about what's going on over here. We're handling what went down over here. This is why we have a reparations movement over here now. And also the slave trade now has been industrialized to the prison industrial complex. That's the new slave system. It's run just like a plantation, sir. So slavery didn't go anywhere. It became industrialized and it's alive right now. It's funny because, like, when white people talk about, like, so I'm Irish Hungarian. My ancestors were enslaved and sent to Australia. But you're like, oh, well, that wasn't chattel slavery. But now you want to make the distinction. Now you want to be like, Sir, your people in Ireland, they were criminals and they were sent over to Australia because that was a penal colony. They sent the worst people from Europe over there to Australia. And y'all went over there and slaughtered the damn Aboriginal people. And then when they sent y'all over there to Tasmania, you killed almost all of them. You had a complete genocide of the damn Tasmanians. So that devilish genocidal mindset just follows you everywhere you go. So doesn't the it, so? Irish were criminal for stealing a loaf of bread to feed their family. Most of the convicts sent to Australia were crimes of necessity. They weren't malicious. Oh, crimes of necessity. So when poor black people do crimes of necessity, it's not, oh, where they were just trying to feed their families. It's some genetic deficiency that makes do black people Do you know what a straw man is? Right? Because this is what you just did here. Oh, no, 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 sir. You just made it slaves, go. They were sent here to do slave labor, rented out to private companies. They were cry- no, you were not slaves. You were not slaves. That was a penal colony. They were sending prisoners over there. I they don't were sending you criminals. To understand nuance, but so I'll explain this to you. The Somerset. They Act, were sending the criminals Act over to Australia, out- sir. They were they were sending criminals to Australia. Is that true or not true? 
criminal according to the British Empire, the same empire that genocided the Irish people. Come on, dude, have a bit of nuance. Do you really think that it's a? Do you really think that it's worthy to be sent across to a new continent to be rented out in chain gangs to corporations for fe- stealing a loaf of bread to feed your starving family? If so, you're the criminal. You have a very immoral well, mindset. Well, you just. But everybody, every okay, stop with that. They were um, getting a loaf of bread. They were sending over some of the rapists, the murderers. They were sending over some of the hardcore criminals. Everybody wasn't stealing bread. Some of them were stealing pussy. They were stealing a lot of stuff. So they were sending the hardcore criminals over there, and they went over there doing hardcore criminal shit. They went over there with that criminal mindset, um, murdering the Aboriginal people. They weren't stealing bread. They were stealing lives, sir. They took that same criminality over there to Australia, and some of them brought, they sent them over here and they had the same criminal mindset. You just completely so missed me with that local The vast brand, majority so. were crimes of necessity, menial crimes that wouldn't even be indictable offenses today. If you want to talk about a criminal... Stop crime, it. So why were they over there genociding the Aboriginal people then, sir? If you want to talk about a criminal population, we can talk about black Americans, dude. You can't compare, like, gang shootings and, like, oh. 1350 to stealing a loaf of bread. So don't point the finger from a glass. Oh, stop. I missed with that loaf of bread, and you can't say shit about foundation of black Americans, sir, because the criminal class is orchestrated by the white supremacists over here. The majority of black people are not criminals. Criminal Criminality is only sanctioned to a few neighborhoods and urban areas, sir. Most middle class and well-to-do black people do not engage in criminality, but, sir, you have a culture of white supremacy, which is a global criminal do you culture. Ba- do that- you base your moral system on laws? Because at one point it was illegal to be Jewish, it was illegal to be black. So to use an empire like the British Empire that had genocidal policies against the Irish and say, oh, well, they're criminal because they were exporting food out during a fucking famine that was planned. This goes to show that you have no nuance to history. You think everything... Sir, you can miss me with that because you guys got locked step in line with the British Empire practicing white supremacy. The Irish became some of the most hardcore white supremacists once they allowed you into whiteness. They allowed you guys to be mass police officers and you did your you did your job subjugating the black people with glee. So you can miss me with all of that stuff about how you were genocided because you would have fought the white supremacists who harm you. Instead, you wanted to be like your so-called oppressors, which makes you worse than them, which makes you a coward. We as Foundation of Black Americans, we never wanted to be like our oppressors, and we're the only ones who fight white supremacy to this day. You sat on this phone several times and tried to deny that white supremacy even exists, and they practiced white supremacy on the Irish because the Irish were not allowed to be white for a long time. They were only recently allowed to be white going into the late 1800s, sir. And when they allowed you to be white, you tried to be the best white supremacist you can be. So, sir, please stop. No, that's true. What you just said was true for once. Um, the Irish, you damn right. There's a lot true. of crossover between the Irish Americans and the Black American experience. I don't know if you're familiar with Seneca Park in Central Park. This was an affluent Irish and Black community. 80% of the community it was, was the black. black community. It was, was the Irish black community. It was Irish and it was bulldozed. Okay, it was a black community. Seneca Village was a black community. Many people thought it was derived from Senegal Village. That was a black community, and we let Irish people in. But it was a black community. We've always taken in some of the poor Europeans and taken care of you, sir. So it wasn't no equal type of thing. It was Seneca Village was a black community. It was. And the Anglos, Sir, Anglo- I, I don't even believe it was that much. It. Um, this happened numerous times. The first KKK chapter was against Catholicism, which was basically a proxy for Irish and Italian immigrants. You're not the only one that has some impression. Like every group in America, every group in every country. If you so, there is like there is a. A privilege to being in the demographic majority. I live in Thailand, right? If I go to court, I would have a worse time in that system. I'd have a worse time finding a job because of in-group preference. People favor the majority demographic because that's the majority of people in that nation. This is exclusive this is bad, to white so people. White people actually have the lowest in-group preference out of any population. With the least, this is babble, sir. This is this is just babble. This is babble. To be honest, this is babble, sir. No, it's actually this backed is backed up. This, it's backed up by studies. There's this a study is, from the University babble. of Berkeley, no, no, right? And they found that black Sir, this is this is babble. This is babble you're doing. Because, see, it's real simple. Y'all try to make white supremacy more complicated than what it is. And this is something that you created. This was created by your community. Because I want to get back to the gist of what the conversation was about. Is white supremacy a myth? And white supremacy was something that those in your community said was going to be true, and then they militarily backed it up. The white forefathers sat here and promoted white supremacy. 
Thomas Jefferson, Abraham Lincoln, Andrew Jackson. Every single large empire, powerful force has promoted their own racial supremacy. When the Mongols went in and killed 20% of the global... Per- of, you know the Mongols killed between... 10- Okay, we're not doing what about isms. I'm talking about white supremacy because the Mongols right now are under white supremacy right now. All of these other empires are other under white supremacy. Some people, let's go back to India. We were talking about India earlier. There was a racial caste system in India going back centuries ago, but India is under white supremacy because they were dominated by the British. And then they started sounding like the white supremacists, like Gandhi and others. All of these other places you're talking about right now today. This is such an undue view, Tariq. Come on, my dude. I know you're smarter than is. Me. It's either true or it's not true, sir. I'm just talking truth or not truth. Which one is? It's it? not. Am true. I telling the so, truth or not? Hang on. Okay. Let me. Let me. You got to prove. You got to prove it's not true, and you're not going to babble, sir, because you think you're going to babble. No, no, no. Circles. I'm going to prove so it's not, not true. I'm going to prove it's not along racial no. lines right now. It's very simple. The distinction Mm -hmm. in wealth inequality and geopolitical power is between the global north and the global south. The global north isn't filled with just white people. The Gulf region, Japan, Korea, these are all part of the global north that benefit. Sir, these are people who are allowed to be at certain political positions, be in certain political positions. Japan and all of these other non-white nations, they're still under the thumb of the white supremacists, sir. They're under the thumb of white supremacy. Name a you nation. You sound like a conspiracy theorist. You know if I said... Okay, okay, okay. If, uh, name a non-white nation that's not under the thumb of white supremacy, that the white supremacists can't destroy Well, I think name everyone one. is under the... The sole superpower on this planet is America. Name a non-white country, sir, that the white Western powers cannot immediately annihilate. Name them. Hello. You muted me. Um. So as I was saying, uh, is America? I wouldn't even consider America a white country, and America bullies Australia. Stop. You know, America has bases all over Australia. They fucking blackmail us uh-huh. with trade agreements with China. This is an example. Look at you, Tariq. You have more influence. You're oppressing Australia. America's okay. You're changing the subject, sir. That's called deflecting. See, you like to deflect. I'm gonna ask you one more time because deflection means that I'm right. One more time, sir. We'll do it one more time. Name a non white nation that the white supremacist Western powers cannot immediately destroy. Name it. Go ahead, Dr. David. Okay, so the BRIC nations are making allyship right now. Brazil, Russia, India, China. They've got Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. You won't let me because you know I'm blowing you out on every point. Saudi Arabia, really? Saudi Arabia is doing proxy wars across the world right now. Yemen's been in a state of perpetual You think the the white supremacist powers outside influences... They ran up in South and after 9 11, they ran up in Saudi Arabia so fast, sir. After 9 11, really, you think no, the they didn't? Was That's the up? irony, they didn't. 20 something like 90 percent of the hijackers were Saudi, yet Saudi didn't get any intervention. They intervened in Iraq and Afghanistan. Saudi Arabia was sweet because they're powerful, they got money, and they got allyships with America. Sir, they control the American and the Western powers control the oil and things like that over there. But they got them in check. They got Saudi Arabia ain't moving nothing. They got Saudi Arabia in check. Sorry, you sound like an Islamic fundamentalist. Are you a Muslim? Okay, stop it. You're just saying stuff, sir. Sir, 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 sir. They the Western powers run up in those Middle Eastern countries all the time, just keeping shit up. They run up in the Middle Eastern countries, dropping bombs, all that oil and money they got. Man, the Western powers go over there anytime they feel like it. 
house in the oil, house in the poppy seed fields, burning shit down. They go over there wrecking stuff over there in the Middle East. They ain't running nothing over there over the white supremacists, sir. What are you talking about? Some Middle Eastern countries, sure, but there's other Arabs destabilizing those as well. Saudi Arabia, the Gulf regions, they're sweet, dude. They've got very high um, advancements in human development index and like because the they because the U.S. control them already. They're basically U.S. satellites, sir. They're satellites. I mean, of the that's United an ass States conspiracy, government. but they seem to be doing their own is thing. It's really? a sovereign nation, is it not? But it's sovereign, sir. You, you didn't address the point puppets. before about the global. But, but, sir, they have puppet governments that's controlled by the Western powers, sir. They have puppet governments. And if you have people who try to buck the Western powers, they send those jackals and they send those Eric Prince soldiers over there to go get them, sir. And you know that. Come on. Is there, I mean, this is a kind of a racial take, a racist take that you have. That white people are so superior that we can just control the 190 countries in the world. Because you do. Which ones don't you control? I mean, Which isn't that a testament control? to our intelligence and our investment in warfare? Like, God damn. I mean, maybe you might we should, be. Maybe we should worship whites if we're capable of this. You you might be. You, hey, I, I, I've never denied that fact. Maybe you are intelligent or maybe you're just more devious Maybe black folks don't really understand the level of evil genius that some white supremacists have. There might be something to that. But the fact is, you, the white supremacists, they control the globe militarily. I mean, Rwanda, right now. I mean, black people shouldn't have the capability of being evil. Have you heard of the Rwandan genocide? In a year, they hacked to death with axes and fucking like having mm -hmm. a million. That's on them. They got turned out psychologically by the British and by the European powers who who supplied all the weapons. So, yeah, that's on them. Holler you know people. what's funny we is that you have this. We, we don't do that. Foundation of Black Americans, we ain't on that. We ain't doing no genocides of anybody. We're the only ones who are fighting white supremacy consistently, sir. And that's why people always have to focus on us. I've, I've, you could actually construe the gang wars in like places like Chicago as a genocide, I'd say. Stop. Don't, 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 don't. That the gang wars are an exaggeration of the white supremacist's imagination, sir. The you don't even try to compare the Bloods and Crips and the Vice. It, it ain't even that damn serious. That's a that's a an exaggeration of the imagination. On, sir. It ain't in even certain a, places stop, in in certain suburbs, there's worse crime rates than the most violent countries in the world. There's more PT, where? PTSD. Where, where, what suburbs? Because any crime in America in black areas are always concentrated in certain parts of urban areas. Yeah, that's areas. what I'm saying. If you take those urban areas that have worse crime rates, worse violent crime, intentional homicide rates, than places like Iraq during the Iraq war. Like the PTSD oh, no, levels no. in these countries, you could compare that to a genocide. Well, stop. And the only reason we have violence in those areas is because it's orchestrated by the white supremacists. Every the white supremacists orchestrate all of it. Do they not? What? These places are heavily policed. These places are heavily policed. We can't police them as black people because we don't get the resources. That's why we're trying to get reparations. The white supremacists have all the resources to do the quote unquote policing. And there's more crime than ever. You get billion dollar budgets, yet there's more crime. So why is that? If it's not intentional, if it's not for the intent of creating more crime, they orchestrate the crime. So, right? OK, if we want, uh, you want to move on to black American cultures, because I wanted to make a couple more points about Arab slavery and why it's, a hit, why it's so silly, but you're a Muslim considering you're I'm, I'm not a Muslim but go ahead go, go ahead okay so Muslims today uh still enslave black people and as I that has nothing to do with us foundational black Americans I know there's slavery all over the world and who are they selling the slaves to they're usually selling them to the white supremacists in Europe sir you're not going to wiggle out of it there's a market for that stuff yeah they're over there getting African people from East Africa, Somalia, Ethiopia, running them up there through Libya, Morocco, and all of these other places, and they're sending them to Europe. There's a European market for them, sir. So we're not going to leave the white supremacists out of it because they want the chattel based the whole slavery in Niger, Chad, Mauritania. These are in villages where black people are born into slaves to Arab and Berber masters. They run away, right? They go to the police, the Arab.
And they sell them to white Europeans, sir. They sell them all over to in Belgium, Germany, Britain. There's so many people up there, black people who are sold and, and enslaved in Europe and the UK. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's orchestrated by the white supremacists. Sir. No, all the slaves the usual... in these countries stay in Mauritania. At one point, I think 2007, 10% of Mauritania was enslaved and they were mostly black people and the owners were Arab Berbers. Yet you say nothing about that because you want to you want a memorial. Because the white supremacists are getting some of those slaves too. So you're not going to just point the finger at the Arab Berbers and ignore the fact that many of these enslaved people are sent up there to Europe. You love leaving Europe out the mix. And they're the main culprits, sir. So you and the Arabs are fucked up. How about that? And Go if ahead, I sir. Could live, if I was a black man and I could live in any part of the world, I'd pick a black country. Are you, are you seriously arguing that if a black man's enslaved in Europe and he runs out into the street and says, I'm a slave, that the cops are going to arrest him and take him back to the boss? Because that's what happens in Mauritania, Niger, and Chad. Uh, this is a false... Don't give a shit. Ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm a foundational black American, so that's something that they would have to work out. I'm in my homeland that I've been in for centuries upon centuries. So so that's what I'm concerned with. I'm not the the global police of anybody. I'm talking about what's going on in here. My main focus is what's happening over here with foundational black Americans and how we react to systematic white supremacy. And our job is to fight and combat white supremacy to replace it with a system of justice. Isn't a system of justice more preferable than a system of white supremacy? There is no system. Of, can you tell me one law in America or in any Western country that criminalizes being black. Yeah, the common law. It's a common law now. You used to have the laws on the books. You used to have the signs on the books. You used to have the laws very overtly written out. A black person could not live here. A black person could not work here. A black person couldn't be here after dark. A black person can't drink from this water mm -hmm. fountain. And I agree, those you are had, racist laws, but what's a law uh, like that today? Okay, this is what I'm saying, sir. The spirit of the law is still here. After 1965, black people got them laws erased off the books verbally, but now you practice those same laws in common law. So now when a black person gets shot by a white cop, instead of saying that the black person deserves it and the white cop is going to get off because he's white, you say, well, the black person scared the white cop. The white cop feared for his life. So wink, wink. It's a common law that so you practice. It's a conspiracy. You can read the cops in fifth. That's not a conspiracy, sir. It, the spirit of those laws is still there. You practice them through common law now, just like with Cal Rittenhouse. Cal Rittenhouse got what... This is what... No, let's, let's stay on... No, 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 because a black person couldn't pay for what Kyle Rittenhouse got done to him in court. Kyle Rittenhouse was a poor white man and the court system, the judicial system, the police system, the media system bent over backwards for him. The judge acted like his damn attorney. A black person couldn't pay 10, 15 million dollars to get that kind of treatment. So whiteness itself has monetary value and it's based on common law. It's an understood understanding that people don't even have to verbalize. They just know this is how it's supposed to be. And that's the insidious part of white supremacy, sir. So when you say show the laws on the books, yeah, you done took the laws off the books, but you got this osmosis type of thing where everybody's supposed to know what you're supposed to do as white supremacists when black people are involved. That's the power of it. That's why you have to deny that white supremacy exists now, but you still practice it, sir. I mean, I don't know how to argue with a conspiracy theorist on this topic, but let's talk about conspiracy. Black so that's people, a conspiracy. unarmed black Americans have a one in a million chance of being shot by the police. If you really think there's a war on black people, <laughs> sir, you're paranoid. Sir, you need sir, 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 killing unarmed innocent black people, and it's very important that the black person is innocent, that's a way to codify white supremacy because, as I said earlier, Supreme means I can kill your group with impunity and you can't kill mine. Name the black people who are Please. killing white people in America with impunity. Um, like, so you can look at interracial homicide rates, right? Name the black people who are killing white people with impunity. 
I can name several There's white no people. There's no one who's killing black people with impunity in America. Um, George Zimmerman. Um, what's that? Darren Wilson. Sir. Um, Daniel Pantaleo. The list goes on. I can go on and on. It's and funny. The first, these. the first person you mentioned, Zimmerman, he's a fucking Mexican, Guatemalan, like who's white. He's a white Hispanic. He's a, he's he a Mexican classifies... goblin. Come on, dude. This guy does not look white. He classifies himself as he's white enough. <laughs> yeah, if you look at the look he's at the white enough. As most wanted, the ten most wanted. He's white. He's white enough. The white supremacists all supported him and gathered around him. He's white enough, <laughs> he's sir. Not. Mm -hmm. He's white enough to practice white supremacy, sir. But go ahead. Name the opposite. Name the black Zimmerman. Name the black Eric um, um, Daniel Pantaleo. Name the black Darren Wilson. Name the black people who's killing white people with impunity. I want to hear this, sir. Name the black people who are killing white and people with impunity. And just for the record to the listeners. Um... No, 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 no. You're not, not going to deflect. Name the black people who are killing white people with impunity. Let's make it plain. Go ahead. I just want to say that you keep muting me. So, like that. Name the black people, one more time, who's killing white people with impunity, sir. One last time. Uh, there was a black cop that killed a white Australian woman. Uh, a couple years ago, um, that was pretty. And shocking. he went to jail. Well, the white cops would kill kill black people if it's uh, unjust. He went murder, to jail. It's literally a murder. He went. They go to jail too. Okay. David, what's his name? Okay. Derek okay. Uh, Chauvin, the guy that killed George yeah. Floyd, who died. It took a global damn uprising to get that man in jail, sir. It took a global. So that's uprising. not impunity. To... I can show. You Half the country was burned down to get that man charged, sir. Do you know what modern day debates is? Maybe we can actually have a research topic okay. and we can debate this. Th thank you so much, sir. All right. Because now you're just deflecting and babbling. There we go. <laughs> he tried to talk about that white woman who got shot in Minnesota. And yeah, they put the cop in jail by the black cop. They put him in jail. So now you don't have an argument. So now he's now you're fishing. So if you if you're fishing for an argument, that means you've run out of material, sir. Then you want to talk about Derek Shaven. No, there, there was a, a global uprising to get that man charged. That's how strong white supremacy is. You have to have a global uprising to get one suspected white supremacist locked up. Yeah. Lord. But I think that was a good debate. I think that was a great conversation. I think it was constructive, right, family? I think that was pretty constructive. It's a lot of people in here. What's up, Sincere? I see you, fam. I think that was constructive. But anyway, shout out to everybody in the room. Um, guys, you guys, if y'all haven't seen my new movie, American Maroon, that's a great movie. Go to American-Maroon.com. Talking about how black people got out of the swamps and started fighting white supremacy. Speaking of white supremacy, American-Maroon.com. You can also go to Amazon and get it. Where are my L.A. people? All my L.A. people holler at me because we have an event out here at the Hidden History Museum for Juneteenth. Got a great mixer, um, um, comedy event networking event that we're going to have at the Hidden History Museum. Get your tickets at HiddenHistoryMuseum.com, ladies and gentlemen. HiddenHistoryMuseum.com, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, I'll, I'll try to be on a little bit later. Um, I'm going to go kick it with the family for Memorial Day. And um, again, go to HiddenHistoryMuseum.com and I'll check in with y'all later. Peace.